<laughs> now, when they do have a litter, everybody else is involved in looking after them. It's not just mum's job. So, everybody joins in. Now, uh, mum has actually just heard another litter of cubs. So, I'm not actually too sure how many she's got. Um, they're in the box at the back. They're about five days old now. So, they're incredibly tiny at the moment. Um, about three or four inches long and when they're first born they're covered in white fur so that will change very quickly to grey um, so the moment they've all got their own individual little voices now in here dad is Henry he's sat the other side of the water at the moment he's in charge of the rest of the rabble in here um, unfortunately, Mum passed away in the winter in here too, so uh, for the time being, Dad's in charge, everybody does as Dad says. We've got two litters of cubs in here again. Now, the oldest, older two uh, are Mary and Pippin. Mary is just heading up to the left over by the tree stump up there, and Pippin is just, not you, he's right down here in front of me, he's just heading over to the right now, thank you. So Mary and Pippin. The other three, one of them just coming out of the water, uh, they are Jasmine, Bubble and Squeak, and they are about 18 months old now, so still still quite young. Jasmine's the only girl in this pen, so we will move her out before the end of the year. Obviously, with no dominant female in here, we don't want to give them anything to argue over, and we don't want to cause any inbreeding. Once she's out, they'll live together as an all-male group, and that should work absolutely fine again. River is two and a half years old, always full of energy and enthusiasm and gets to put a bit of hard work in for his food. Now, many people think that the British are nocturnal and that's why you don't see them very often in the wild. Now, that's not really the case. They are fairly opportunistic and they get up when their stomach tells them to. Here, they obviously know when they get fed. Now, they're always up and about just before and just after the feeding time. Um, I like to take the edge off their appetites, but not fill them up completely. Because if I give them too much to eat, they will go and sleep for the rest of the day and nobody is going to see them. Now, in the wild, that's obviously their ideal situation. They would like to find as big a meal as they possibly can. Whether it's a very large fish, a duck or a goose, they will eat as much of it as they can and then go and sleep for a couple of days and save up on some energy. Now, if they're in an area where there's lots of small items of prey, frogs, small fish, voles, anything along those lines, you're likely to stand a better chance of seeing them. Uh, you stand a better chance of seeing them because they're going to be up and about a lot more frequently to go and find their food. So food is a big depending factor as to how often you are going to see them in the wild. Now, I often get asked what happens if we ever have too many British otters here. That's not normally the case. At the moment, uh, we do have oh, quite a few, times. but they're either about 10 years old or older, oh. or 3 years old or younger. So it's quite nice for us, we've got some young ones to keep things going. Here, we like Probably enough to keep our over. population going, um, but we don't want an excess of them. We do swap with other parks and zoos. Um, yeah. We do swap with other parks and zoos, that introduces a bit of fresh blood to the park here and it stops any inbreeding potential. With regards to them going into the wild, there's no breeding and release programme for them. They used to